Hey everybody, this is Sarah, and welcome back to another episode. Today is going to be a very heavy one here on the PML Refuge channel. And it's big because it's something that affected me and really changed, destroyed, altered my life severely because of PMO. And so really this is a dire warning to everybody who's involved with PMO, but especially if you are either pursuing a relationship or currently in a relationship. Because this topic is going to be talking about how PMO affects your relationships. Now, it's a good idea before you go too far into this video to watch the previous one about how PMO affects your brain. Because if anything, that kind of provides the foundation for this video. Because they really work in a sequence, you know, where it starts to affect you first and then it starts to affect others around you, especially those that you are romantically involved with. But this is just a short recap of that video. Uh, again, I, I highly encourage you to watch that one first, however. So we need to go back into, well, how does PMO affect your brain first? And sh long story short, PMO uh, regular usage of PMO, rather, causes you to start to crave dopamine and to flood your dopamine receptors in your brain. Even if it's just edging, it's the same effect starts happening. In so doing, you start having a dependency on dopamine, just like drug addicts, alcoholics, anybody with severe addiction start craving whatever it is that they're addicted to. Now, because of that, you start searching out harder and harder versions of pornography. You start increasing the amount of times that you engage in self-pleasure. And really, it starts to become both. You know, you, you combine both those things, and that's what ends up happening. And so you fry those dopamine receptors. And really, at that point, you're just craving sex so much, you don't even really see people after that. Now, you can probably guess as to where this is going if that's what's starting to happen to your head and it's very common knowledge you know if you search you know pornography how it, it how it uh, changes relationships or damages relationships or how does excessive masturbation change relationships you will have the same kind of answer because what will happen is if you are engaging in those things uh, regular sex will not be good enough for you. In fact, you're going to have the complete wrong viewpoint of why sex is needed in a relationship because you are going to be extremely self-centered when it comes to sexual relations with your partner. Uh, you won't really see the point of foreplay. You know, you'll know that it's important. And of course, like, you'll want to do it to, you know, make your uh, significant other happy. Uh, but really deep down, you'll, you'll really just be thinking the entire time, I just want to get to when it, uh, my orgasm, essentially. You know, I just want to get to that part. You know, I want to get, you know, naked as fast as possible so that we can get to the actual act of sex as fast as possible and so on and so on and so forth. You know, you, you will just completely miss the point of why intimacy is so important and building intimacy through foreplay. You'll, you'll completely miss the point. Let alone, you will not really see the point of just simply pleasuring your partner uh, because really you'll always be looking for your partner to pleasure you. If any, you know, if anything, you'll be looking for that first, then you'll look into, um, you know, pleasuring your partner next. You just, and especially, like I said, you really won't look at the point of just doing that to make your partner happy because PMO has made you so self-absorbed when it comes to sex. You will just literally be looking for uh, that feeling of orgasm for yourself. And if you talk to any healthy, happy couple, especially if you're talking to men, the men will tell you that for women... The foreplay happens long before you get to the bedroom or when you get to intimate settings. The foreplay starts, you know, maybe hours before that or maybe even days or weeks before that. You know, women want you 
That's why, you know, men take them out on dates. That's why men buy them gifts, make them feel special. It's almost an entire day event leading up to that act. And again, you're doing it because you want to make your partner happy. You're not doing it simply to just for you to have sex. You know, again, you're missing the point if that's why you're engaging in that behavior. You know, don't get me wrong. Yeah, there is a side of you that's going to want that and is going to hope that that's what um, all of this foreplay and intimacy uh, leads to. But, you know, again, a true happy, healthy relationship does that so that they can make their partner very happy and loved and secured. So that is just one aspect of it. Now, the sex, the second, I'm sorry, the second aspect to look at is uh, over sexualizing either your partner or um, even over sexualizing the act of sex. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, because uh, you're engaging in PMO, just like any addict type of addiction, you are never going to fully satisfy or hit a point when those sexual needs are met fully, right? That's why it's an addiction, because it, it, there is no end to having those cravings, right? You're always going to crave more. You're not going to just, uh, especially if you are, you know, fully immersed in PMO, uh, it is never going to just be enough to, you know, just self-pleasure once and then think, okay, I'm done, you know, for the year. I don't have to do that ever again. You're always going to crave it. So because you're always going to crave it, you're, again, that's going to lead you to viewing more and more uh, pornography. Uh, that's going to get you involved in more and more fetishes. Whatever the thing is, it's just going to increase those cravings. Now, because of that, you are going to tie that in to the person that you are with. Whether that is romanticize, over-romanticizing things, whether that is sadly, you know, picturing somebody else in place of the person that you are actually with, or if it's imagining your fetish when you're in the middle of sexual intimacy, and sad to say, you know, you can look this up on, you know, nofap reddits, on ones who used to be addicted to pornography and excessive masturbation. Sad to say, a lot of guys start developing ED in the bedroom because their brain is thinking this is not good enough. You know, this this sexual pleasure, this this foreplay is not good enough for me to get that release. So a lot of them develop those problems in the bedroom. And again, this is not an accident. This has been done because of all that time and energy that the one that is spent on PMO with just themselves, they are not able to cross that over into having another person, into having a loving, happy, sexual relationship with another person. They are not able to do that. So those are probably the two biggest ways that PMO affects uh, your, your relationships, you know, and honestly, that's kind of just the tip of the iceberg. That's kind of the introductory things. You know, once I kind of finish with this PMO course, I'm going to be giving lots of just kind of open-ended lectures on this. And I'm sure that there's going to be much more that I want to deep dive into when it comes to this. But one last area that I wanted to talk on before we go is the lying, you know, because you know that PMO is not natural, even from a young age of a kid to a teenager to a young adult, you more than likely, especially if you've been engaged in it for years or sadly even decades, are very good at lying about PMO, lying about your addictions, lying about your pornography usage, lying about your fetishes, whatever, that you are extremely good at covering your tracks. Now, that's what I even recognized with myself. I recognized that not only was I very good at lying when it comes to PMO, I just became very good at lying in general. You know, it didn't have to be about, be about PMO. It could be about anything. I just became very, very good at lying. And as you can imagine, 
becoming very good at lying is never good in any kind of relationship that you have. Because that could come to little white lies, to lying about things that I was supposed to do that I didn't do, whether that was lying about my feelings about the relationship in general. And especially if you have entered into a long-term relationship now with somebody and you are heavily involved in PMO usage, you got to lie about your PMO usage, you know, because you're with somebody all the time. So they're going to wonder, you know, why are you on your phone so much? Uh, What kind of things are you looking at on social media? If you are actively watching pornography, you know, they don't know that you are. And the list just goes on and on and on. So what did we talk about in just this brief time today when it comes to PMO in your relationships? Well, the first thing we talked about is PMO destroys intimacy. You know, you will fail to see the need to uh, set up foreplay. You will fail to see the need to focus on your partner's needs rather than on your own needs. And you will almost speed up activity in the bedroom just to get those dopamine receptors filled, I guess you could say. Uh, The second thing is you will start to objectify your partner. You know, because again, normal sexual activities are not good enough for you and your brain because you have flooded your dopamine receptors. And so because of that, just normal sexual activity between partners is not going to be good enough. And the third thing we talked about is lying. You will become so good at lying in general, but especially you will become good at lying with PMO. And that will absolutely affect your relationship. The conclusion to all of this is if you are in a relationship, whether it has just begun or whether your relationship has been going on for a long time. Sadly, I had been in a marriage. I had been married when I came out about my PMO addiction and I had been married for about six or seven years at that point. So think of that. They had spent all that time with me and that entire time I had been covering it up. Sad to say, it absolutely destroyed my marriage. I do not want that to happen to you. Please tell your significant other about your addiction. Please open up to them and then get the help that you need. That is all that I have for today about PMO and relationships, please take it seriously. You know, it is so difficult for ones to overcome these problems. And you just, you have to overcome it. You just have to. That is all that I had today for, this is Sarah signing off and I will see you all next week.